When it comes to computer problems, there are nearly infinite possible causes, but today I'm going to show you how to solve nearly any problem with Windows, assuming of course that the problem is with the operating system itself and not a hardware failure or just with a specific program. And I've got just a few super simple steps involving some basic commands that should fix most issues and then one final last resort. But even that does not require wiping and reinstalling anything, but rather does a complete in-place repair install keeping everything else and I'll put the timestamps in the description so you can come back to this video next time you have an issue before we continue though I do want to thank today's sponsor Micro Center to whom I've already been a customer and those are the best sponsors Micro Center has a huge range of electronics from computers networking devices TVs and monitors and more with over 30,000 items in stock and by the way in my experience if you go to one of their physical locations they carry things that no other store has particularly with specialty stuff like individual computer components. And obviously the people working there are going to be more knowledgeable than what you'd see at some run of the mill big box store or something. Now, whether you're shopping in store at one of Micro Center's locations or looking online at microcenter.com, you'll find a bunch of great deals. And also check out their new lineup of business solutions, including workstations from Dell and Supermicro, as well as their new Supermicro workstation or server builder at certain locations. And if you've stuck around until now, it's definitely worth it because Micro Center is offering new customers a free 240 gigabyte SSD in store. You can read all the details on their site, but there's no purchase necessary and it's not one of those chance to win things. You just sign up and you get your coupon and bring it into claim it. Again, I'll put that link in the description so you can read all the details how. And so with all that being said, let's continue. All right, now we can get cracking. For this video, I'm assuming you've already tried the usual stuff, which I'll just list off. Like you've restarted, checked for updates, updated your graphics drivers, have done a full virus scan. If it's a network issue, you made sure that only that computer is having issues. And if the problem does seem to be related to a specific program, you've tried reinstalling it. Well, in that case, the next course of action is to try running a few commands created to repair Windows. Now, some of you may have heard these a million times already, but I will go into more detail, so stick around. And for these commands, you guessed it, they're the System File Checker, SFC, and the Deployment Imaging Servicing and Management Command, DISM. And these are the exact actual commands shown here. Really quickly, just for context, the SFC command basically checks for corruption within the current Windows installation and fixes it based on a stored system image and DISM checks for issues with that system image, also referred to as the component store, and repairs it too. Many places will just tell you to just run SFC and DISM and be done with it. Some say in the reverse order, but we're just gonna cut out all the uncertainty altogether. Here's what you do. Search the start menu for the command prompt and run it as administrator. Then first run the command SFC space slash scan now and let it go. It might take a couple minutes, then hopefully it will say, did not find any integrity violations. Or it might say, found corrupted files and successfully repaired them, which actually might be better news because that might have solved your problem right there. And this is a real example of a time I did this myself and it said that. Though another possibility is that it found corrupted files and was not able to repair them, or even that SFC won't run at all. For example, if it says Windows Resource Protection could not start the repair service, stick around till the end. This is one I had to deal with personally. There is an option to fix that without reinstalling everything, but you're probably not gonna like it. No matter what it says though, don't worry because we are not done. Oh, and as a side note, if you happen to close the command prompt while the scan is running, it keeps running in the background. So if you try to run it again, it will just seem to hang until the first one is done. It's not frozen. Now, if SFC found anything, whether it repaired it or not, restart your computer. But if it didn't find anything, it's not necessary to restart. And after you do that, next, run this command. DISM slash online slash cleanup dash image slash restore health. And I'll put these in the description so you can copy and paste them. Again, if it says completed successfully, there weren't any issues. Or if it did find something, it would say so and hopefully have repaired it. And again, if it did find something, probably restart your computer. Finally, run the same SFC command again in any case. If it found errors and did repair it the first time, you wanna make sure that there are none left. 
And if it couldn't repair before, but DISM repaired something, SFC might work now. As a side note, both commands add to the log file at c slash windows slash log slash cbs.log. And after running DISM in that log file, it will even show this with the exact number of corrupted files and stuff. Many times having done all that will fix the problem if the Windows installation itself is corrupted. If it found corruption and was not able to repair, there are still other options. But before we get into that, if it did not find any corruption, and the problem still persists obviously, sometimes the issue is your Windows profile being corrupted. I don't actually know how this happens, but sometimes your individual profile gets corrupted and causes weird stuff. Like one time, my start menu layout kept erasing itself and it was so annoying it turns out it was a corrupted profile. One way to tell if a profile is corrupted is to simply create another extra user account and see if it happens in there too. You can go to settings, accounts, family and other users, add someone else to this PC. And it will ask for a Microsoft account, but no. Just hit don't have this person sign in or whatever it says. It'll ask again and again, just select without Microsoft account, which means a local account. Then just go through and finish making it, keeping your old profile, of course. Then log out of your main profile into the new one and see if the problem keeps happening. Though if it happened randomly, not very often, you might have to use it until it does or long enough where you're confident that it won't. If a new profile does not seem to fix it, or even if it does, there is still one more thing you'll want to try. Because if a new profile does seem to fix it, it very well could be a corrupt profile. And if it is, God help you, because almost nothing can fix that. Now, the solution is simple, just annoying. Move to another user profile, which though is sometimes just as bad as clean installing. But I'll show you how to go about doing it a little bit easier later. But we aren't there yet. There is a method of last resort besides doing a clean install of Windows because we obviously don't want to go there if at all possible. And this option is an in-place repair upgrade. The quick rundown before I show you how is basically you download a Windows image from Microsoft's website, then run it the same way you would when installing a major update. But instead of upgrading to a new version, it just rewrites your current Windows system files. And it does not require you to reinstall any programs or lose any files or anything. Only some minor system stuff might get reset, like you might lose some custom fonts or downloaded language packs, and you'll just have to rerun Windows Update most likely, but that's mostly it. So here's how to do it in detail. And there's actually a couple ways to go about this, both involving the media creation tool. So Google Windows Media Creation Tool, or I'll put the link in the description, and hit Download Tool Now on this page though, it might look a little bit different depending on when you watch this. For me, the file name showed the version of Windows as 21H2, which is important to note. In the Start menu, you can type WinVer, and then look to make sure that the tool you downloaded is for either the same or a newer major version of Windows than what you're using. Then just run the tool and accept all the stuff. Now here's the two ways. The better way to try first, in my opinion, is to click Create Installation Media in order to make an ISO. And if that doesn't work, later you could do the Upgrade This PC Now option. So anyway, click Next, and on this one, make sure that the language, edition, and architecture are correct. If it says both or something non-specific, like all languages or whatever, just change it to be exactly what you're using now. So we'll change it to either 64 or 32 bit, which you can see by the way, by searching the start menu for system information, but it's probably 64 bit these days. Then if there are multiple options for the edition in mind, there wasn't here, make sure that the Windows edition is also right, like home or pro or whatever. Then once it's all right, click next and select ISO file and then just save it anywhere and let it do its thing. It will download the proper ISO version and make the file, and it will ask you at the end if you want to burn it to a DVD, but don't. We do not want to burn the ISO to a USB, DVD, or anything. The upgrade must be run from within Windows, or from my understanding, you would only have the option for a clean white if you didn't. So we have to run it from within Windows. Once the file is done, right click it and hit mount ISO which should create a virtual drive. So go into that and click setup.exe. At this point, if you clicked upgrade this PC now, you'd be in the same spot as we are here. The first screen will say it wants to download updates and stuff, but we don't actually want that. It could complicate things. Just click change how Windows gets updates or however it's worded, and then select not right now. Go through and accept all the stuff and then wait for it to go get ready. 
Now, hold on a second at this next window. This one is critical to pay attention to. Double check that it's installing the right edition, which should be the same as your current one. Even more importantly, make sure it says keep personal files and apps. If it does not say that, and the only option is keep nothing, do not click next or install. That could mean that the ISO you're using or downloaded is for an older version than you're running. And in that case, you'd have to go figure out why that is and get the newer one. Anyway, make sure it's set to keep personal files and apps and hit install or next, whichever one you see. And keep in mind, before this, that's your last chance to change your mind. Now just let it run and it will probably restart multiple times. If you have issues or it fails to install at all, try disabling any third party antivirus and then try again. And also disconnect any device except your monitor, keyboard, and mouse basically. Or you could also try the upgrade now option we saw before or just do the ISO again. In any case, hopefully it should have successfully installed and we'll show you the whole new installation setup flow. Like asking you for privacy settings and stuff, just go through that and you'll be able to log into Windows the same as before with everything still there. And now it's basically the moment of truth. Just use the computer and see if the problem persists. You can also run SFC and DISM again and if it wasn't able to repair before it should be fine now. Now if for whatever reason this didn't fix it there could be a couple causes depending on some things. If the update failed to complete at all and SFC showed corrupted files hold on a minute. If the update did complete but the problem persists, but using a new user profile does fix it, it's almost certainly a corrupted user profile. In which case, if it's a corrupted profile, here's what needs to be done. Go log into that other profile you created or create one now if you didn't. Go to the directory C, users, and then whatever the name of that account is of your original account. Actually though, because of permissions, what you'll probably have to do is while logged into the original account, copy everything to the public user folder and then log out of it, log into the new account, and then copy everything from the public folder into the new one. Copy everything, don't drag and drop and move, actually right click and hit copy everything, but do not copy any hidden folders if you have hidden folders enabled, such as app data or any of those. The hidden folders have system files having to do with the Windows profile, and it would certainly just corrupt the new profile even more. Now all the files are in the new account, but unfortunately program settings probably are not. Also, all programs might not be installed for all users, so you might have to reinstall some stuff. If there's any program settings that you really want to copy, you could just look up where the settings files are stored for that computer and copy them over individually. They probably are in app data, but again, don't just copy the entire app data folder over. Okay, back to what to do if there are still corrupted files or the update failed altogether. If there is no corruption, you've done a repair install and a new user profile doesn't fix it, Honestly, I wouldn't know what to tell you at this point. It could be a hardware issue. It could be from some installed program. And if that's the case, maybe either take it to a professional or do a full backup and a clean wipe. That's what I referred to when I said nearly every Windows problem. But if it does still show corruption, at least we have something to work with. And it could mean that the Windows updater itself is corrupted. And this is almost just as bad because the options are really limited. This exact situation happened to me this year where SFC wouldn't even run and said Windows Resource Protection could not start the repair service. I looked at the log files and it turns out that something called Servicing Stack Update was corrupted. And when I looked that up, I discovered it was a key underlying component for several elements of Windows deployment, such as SFC and DISM. Yes, literally the repair tools in Windows themselves got corrupted. Bruh. Now, if it is something like that, like I said, you can still try and run SFC and DISM and then look at that CBS log file I mentioned before. It will probably look like this and will actually list out all the corrupted files and above it will give even more details and probably say mismatch plus some stuff like the exact location of each corrupted file. The way I fixed this, and yes, I was able to completely fix it, was to painstakingly copy a good version of each individual file from another computer. Nope, not kidding. There were like 60 of them. You will have to make sure that the other computer is the exact same build. I believe even the same minor build number. Fortunately, for some reason, my computer was still installing updates, apparently, and was on the latest version. So I just updated my laptop and then they had the same version. Then basically do a search for the good copies. 
In my case, they all seem to be in these folders. So I just copied all these directories in whole onto a thumb drive and then extracted out the good copies individually as needed from that. But I still had to go in and find the individual things. I couldn't just overwrite everything. Just be prepared for it to find more corrupted files after replacing the first ones. Yes, that happened to me. But after all that, SFC actually did run and it really did succeed in checking integrity with no corruption. I was legitimately shocked it worked. Now there might be easier ways to go about that. You will probably like me find guides on using an external source for DSM, stuff like that. But I don't want this video to be an hour long and that didn't even work for me, I did try that. But it might be worth trying if DISM itself is not corrupted like it was in my case. So just look that up yourself. But after doing everything above, it should have fixed dang near every problem. To be thorough though, I'll mention the check disk command, which is also good to know if your SSD or hard drive are acting up, just look up how to use that. And if you're having a problem where Windows won't boot at all, it could be a boot record issue on which I'm not even gonna attempt to give advice, I'm just not familiar enough with it. Though you can yourself look up the boot rec command, that's one that I know, and its options that might help. So at this point, at least you can say that you'll have tried everything I could think of. Thanks again to Micro Center for sponsoring this video. I'll put some links to their stuff in the description. So check that out, including that free 240 gigabyte SSD. If you guys wanna keep watching, the next video I'd recommend is one where I did go over what the app data folder and all that is about, if you're curious. It really is interesting, so you can click that right there. If you guys wanna subscribe, I only make videos about once a week, so also be sure to enable the bell for notifications so they don't get lost in the rest of your subscriptions. As always, be sure to like the video, comment if you enjoyed it, and let me know what you think. So thanks so much for watching guys and I'll see you in the next one.